Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary, where I do the research to try to teach you a little something about what you're drinking. Tonight's review is one that is way long overdue. This is Elijah Craig Small Batch. Now this is a whiskey that I've talked about at length several times, but tonight I wanted to give it a proper review. So let's get into it. talk a little bit about the name behind the brand. So Elijah Craig was in fact a real person. He was a Baptist preacher from Virginia in the mid-1700s. And during this time, the main church in the United States was the Anglican Church. And as we've seen, you know, multiple times, you just kind of don't mess with an established church's income stream. And that's exactly what the Baptists were kind of doing. So the colonies were paying the Anglican church. I mean, that's kind of where their income stream was coming from. And you know, you, you don't do that. <laughs> so, but mix that with the Baptists in Virginia wanting to free the slaves. And you've got a pretty bad combination of qualities of the populace against the Baptists. Needless to say, Elijah Craig ended up in jail multiple times. So over time, you know, this, some of the stuff kind of slowed down and he decided to be more of a um, benefit to his area, you know, the, the community that he grew up in. So he actually established Kentucky. He moved to Kentucky. He established Kentucky's first lumber mill, uh, their first paper mill, and this thing called a rope walk, which is something that converts hemp into rope. He also started up a school, which is kind of interesting. If you ever feel like reading into it, it's, it's kind of a neat thing. And um, he did all, uh, then he started a distillery in 1789. So, you know, kind of makes a little bit of sense. And because of that, he's been kind of cited as this father of bourbon. Now, here's the problem. That is completely untrue. <laughs> Just there's no way that that could be the case. People were making bourbon for years before this distillery ever opened. Now, what he is cited with is this concept of charring barrels. Now, this again is kind of based, it's more of a legend than it is anything based in fact. And I feel like that fact doesn't exist simply by record keeping being missing. It's not necessarily untrue. It's more just, you can't prove that it's true. So either way, that's why they call Elijah Craig the father of bourbon is there was a story that one of his mills accidentally caught fire and charred some of his barrels. Later on, you know, he reused those barrels because you may as well, and it converted the whiskey completely differently. It took this, you know, clear corn whiskey, maybe aged a little bit in an oak barrel and changed a little bit to just this amber, you know, beautiful brown color that we've all come to know and love. And that's the story. You know, whether it's true or not, doesn't matter, but that's the story. So let's talk about the whiskey that Elijah Craig puts out. They have several different expressions. So they've got the Elijah Craig small batch, They've got the Elijah Craig uh, barrel proof. They've got an 18 year old and a 23 year old as well as a rye. So of all the bourbons though, they're pretty well thought of. And other than this guy right here, most of them are very hard to come by. So um, anyway, let's kind of go into the nosing and the tasting and talk about what we're getting out of this. So this is, like I said, kind of the low tier is the wrong way to put it only because it, it you know, says so kind of like not good quality. It's actually really good quality, but their lowest tier is about 23 to $25. And that's what this is. So let's go ahead and give it a nose. So the nose on this is not terribly complex, but it is, it's distinctive in what you get in, in that this would be a good one to train your nose on. So there are three main things I'm picking out of here and then a couple of ancillary pieces and I'll get into those. So oranges come off very prominently. Then you've got vanilla and there's actually a little bit of mint that you pick up on the nose here. Now you're also getting some typical bourbon notes like caramel and uh, vanilla. I did say vanilla, sorry. Um, kind of like a clove as well. So there's, there's a few things going on in the nose, but let's go ahead and take it. Taste. Cheers. Mm. I'm always happy when I drink this one. <laughs> so this, this is one I've been waiting to review for quite a while. 
and uh, I have talked about it, as I mentioned, I've talked about it before on the channel, and the taste is just really, really nice. Now this is, was this, 47%, so 94 proof. So it's a little bit hotter than what you're gonna get on a lot of cheaper bourbons, which are gonna kinda go down to that 40% range. Think Knob Creek, uh, it's another small batch um, style bourbon. So in this case, because of the, the extra ABV, I found that not only that, but also the, the amount of time that it'll spend in a barrel, it's a bit woodier than you would expect, this particular bourbon. That's not bad. I personally like a woody bourbon, so I, I'm happy about this, but it's something to know. If that's not your thing, maybe, maybe this isn't gonna work for you, but it's a higher ABV, it's inexpensive, um, it does have that, that woody flavor, but it's also got other characteristics of a typical bourbon, like vanilla, a um, little bit of fruit. You know, you could call it an apple, you could call it an orange, you could maybe, you know, probably not call it a lemon, um, but you know, citrus, citrusy, fruity notes. Um, you've got vanilla in there, you've got caramel. It's got all of those classic bourbon notes. So that's why I think this is a great one to train yourself on. It allows you to experience higher priced bourbons in a new way of knowledge. So. That's uh, kind of what I would get on the, the taste here. Um, so let's talk about overall. Obviously, I'm, I'm a fan of this one. I've talked about it several times. Uh, it's in my, uh, I believe it's in my beginner bourbon buying guide, but more so it's just been one that I've recommended for beginners for a long time. That being said, it's also really, really good in an old fashioned, uh, in a Manhattan, in just neat. It's just, a solid whiskey to kind of keep around. And because of that reason, I'm actually gonna give it my coveted rating of stock it. I think this is one that you should just always have on hand. Considering the price, it's really hard to, really hard to argue, <laughs> you know? For $23, keeping any bourbon around that you enjoy, assuming that you enjoy this, is kind of a no-brainer. So that would be my suggestion for this. I think you should stock this whiskey. So thank you for joining me here on The Whiskey Dictionary. Please go check out thewhiskeydictionary.com and I hope to see you on the next one. Uh, actually, I will say my next one is actually gonna be uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof because I am so excited about that one and I, I actually went out and bought this specifically so I could review that. <laughs> so I will see you next week. Cheers.